it's an incredible thing and I never would have believed uh, when I was younger, but your mind can get you into a state where you actually haven't got control of it. And uh, these thoughts will come into your head that, that seem so real, but they're not real at all. Um, and that was the case uh, with me, where it seemed as though the easiest option was to just end it, get out of it, you're just, you're just a pain to everyone. And um, yeah, so it took, and, and the frightening thing is how close it can be. It's, it can be actually a toss of the coin. And, and people might say, well, how could they do that? So it's really important to see it for what it really is. And, and it's, it is just thoughts that have actually gone off the rails a bit and you have to put them back into perspective of where you are. And, that, and that's been a constant battle for me to, to make sure that um, my thought patterns are such that I can, I can shelve those thoughts and know that that's just a passing phase and tomorrow I'll feel better. For a, a, a farmer that lives by themselves, uh, when these thoughts start coming in, there's no one to talk you out of it. You're, you're actually got an internal battle trying to, uh, trying to get in, uh, yeah, get on top of all these things. So I, I think that for any farmer that's working on their own, uh, it's a very dangerous situation for them, and they must uh, actually make a positive step to either ring someone up, go and see someone, uh, whenever they're feeling like that. In a similar situation to me, being a, a sole operator and, and being on my own, uh, I've been really lucky that I've had friends that I can talk to, my children who I can talk to, um, but I've got one friend in particular that has had a very similar experience to me, and we've got an open uh, conversation where I'll, I, can, I know I can say anything that's actually in my head, I can say it to him, and he won't look down on me, in fact, you'll probably say, actually, I've had the same thoughts too. And then I'm the same with him, and it makes me feel good that I can help him. So it's a really good uh, relationship for both, both of us, and I think everyone needs that sort of relationship. Especially this one uh, connection with my friend, because you've got to be careful who you talk to. Some are actually a bit negative, and they can't really understand what you're talking about. And even uh, with my kids, who honestly have probably kept me alive because I wanted to uh, stay alive for them, uh, you, you can't unload some of the, the deep, dark things that, that, that are actually going on in your head. And, and whether it would be, uh, you know, make an effort to see a psychiatrist or a mental health clinician or someone like that, you need someone that you can say anything to and unload it. And you might think, oh no, I can battle it by myself, I can do it. Nah, it'll just get you into a corner that you can't get out of. And that's when it gets really dangerous. There are times when uh, you get that dark that there is just not a glimmer of hope whatsoever. It's a really big dark hole and there's no hope of ever getting out of it. And that's where you need to have that, uh, that talk with, the, with, with your friend. Um, in my case, if ever I thought that I was getting really bad and I was having suicidal thoughts, I had an automatic default that it would go, no, I'm not, I'm, I've, I've got my kids, I've got five kids. I don't want them to carry the scars of my my uh, suicide through their lives as well. So it became, honestly, you, you're thinking suicidal thoughts all the time. It's a natural thing. And you, and you, you never, should never think badly of yourself for doing it because you're gonna have your thoughts. But the, the thing is, what are you gonna do with those thoughts? For me, as soon as I thought it, I'd automatically default to, no, I can't do it because I've, I've be, gotta be around for my kids and they still love me. And then that automatically dealt with it and deflected it. And so you're constantly deflecting it all the time and, and then not allowing yourself to get into that really dark spot where you want, think you might do something. You know, a lot of times you don't even have to say anything. It's just the fact that you're there with them and they know that, that you're there for them. And, and that can be a really powerful thing. You don't have to solve anything. It's all you have to do is listen. And, and uh, sometimes when you're on your own and you've got all these things coming down on top of you, the, the thought of being able to unload or download all that stuff out and, and, uh, and be able to present that to someone else, even if you don't solve anything, it's just a really good sense of release that you're actually sharing it. And it's almost like you're sharing a problem. So I, I would say that that would be the most important thing, but probably don't think, you know, don't say things like, uh, oh yes, I've, I've had similar experiences, I know exactly how you feel on that. Because really, do you really know what that person is feeling? The important thing is that you sympathise with them and, you, and you're there for them.